Are you ready? Are you ready, people? Oh, come on, are you ready? Come on! Okay, let's get started. Right? How's everybody doing this afternoon? Awesome. Um, I've been very blessed to uh, grow into this industry as a kid. And the people that I met were all trendsetters. We're all people who were innovators. And I looked up to these people, and I still do, uh, when I was younger. And it's a privilege for us to be here with these three gentlemen who paved the way for so many dancers around the world. If it wasn't for these three gentlemen, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. And uh, I'm so proud of where Salsa's going, the new generation. I'm so proud of what the kids are doing today. But I also want to bridge legends. And I also want our legends to help tomorrow's future. Okay? Because this is the only way we're going to take it to that next level. So, without further ado, everybody, please help me welcome Los Hermanos Vasquez and Vasquez. Awesome, awesome. So, pretend we're in the living room and we're just going to have a great conversation. So, how are you guys feeling? How are you guys? How are you being back home in LA? Yes, sir. I just want to say thank you to everybody to be here. First of all, a lot of people around the world, they, like my brother said, they take classes and they never pay attention, not even to the history of the teachers. No, they never even pay attention to the history of salsa. 90%, I can say 90%, because it's true. A lot of the structures around the world, they don't know what's going on with the culture of Mambo and salsa and Afro. They teach the steps and they don't know the names. And that's that's kind of dangerous, guys. Because we don't need math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. And we listen to the beautiful songs and we don't even understand what it is, the rhythm. And we just okay. We make an excuse sometimes, hey, it's fusion. That is the only excuse that we have, it's fusion. The most important thing, guys, is Today, you guys want to learn something really beautiful, and I want to, after this class, everybody start thinking about what you guys dance, the culture. That's the most important thing. All right, cool, awesome. Thank you, Francisco. So the question, uh, one by one, one by one, please, starting with Luis first. Luis, how do you feel coming back home to where it all started for you? Oh, it feels really amazing. I was really nervous because last time that I was here was 10 years ago and um, the salsa scene, it was really nice at that moment but I started hearing a lot of things from different dancers there who just to go to Europe and they say, you know, salsa is disappearing and Los Angeles is uh, not even on two anymore because before it was on one and then on two took over, kind of but now it's more bachata and all that and, um, and I was a little bit nervous to see a lot of my friends that I haven't seen for such a long time. And being in front of new people, it feels like that. But at the same time, I'm very excited. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Thank you very much for coming. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. And I hope I'm going to try to promise to come at least once every two years because we need to do something for the Elisa Assassin. We need, we need a back. So That's much. right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Francisco, you're here with your travel all over the world. How does it feel to have, how does it feel to be back at the Los Angeles Salsa Festival with your brothers, with, with your brothers together? Oh, I feel great because it's, um, I grew up with them dancing like that. And when I see these two boys right here close to me, I feel like at the time, uh, I really enjoy the company first of all because the energy. We always entertain people, we're funny, and we always try to do the best from us to the people. We never do it for us. I never see my brother Johnny and we do it for themselves to be looked at so I, I think it, when I see my brother teaching today, I was so proud to see how the people follow him. And, and this is what I, as a teacher, I said, I did a good job. Because when you see someone that you teach in a good way, the best of you, he became better than you, 
and it's your credit, it's your, oh my God, I did what I was thinking before. I did something magical instead of my brother. And sometimes he can't even understand that he has something magical. I see the class with the kids, with everybody. I was like, wow, this is magical for me. And that's, I feel so amazing because my brothers are here. I know I'm here in LA, I just get back from the tour too, and people they know me that I want, I always try to put the culture first, then my style. Because thanks to the culture, I learned so much, so much. And I still don't learn right now. John, like a profession, or the mother of the old, the girl. <laughs> like your brother mentioned, your mother wants to know, your back, you can't really do this, all right? No, I'll give it the... <laughs> hey, he was looking at me like jealous, you know, because my brother gave me a kiss. No. But we love him, even because... <laughs> even if he was a son. So, tell me, tell me. So, your back. You're back with your brothers, like your brother mentioned. You're back home. You, you, you come here every year to other festivals, but you're here with your brothers. Como te sientas aquí con tus hermanos? I mean, for me, I felt like I was in the Hollywood Park Casino this weekend, watching you three everywhere. Everyone who ran out to around you. How do you feel being back with your brothers? Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> I feel really. Amazing. I mean, I don't see them so much, you know. I see my brother Luis like once a year, and we live in Europe, and I don't see him that much. Francisco, even every two, two, three years. So being here with them, it made me go back in my beginning, my first steps, because I learned with both, both of them. And you know my, you don't believe me, but uh, my legs are shaking right now. It's uh, amazing. Um, I just thank God to have a family, to have two, two teachers like them, and to to make me to make me que me hicieron ser quien soy hoy. Yo lo hago. Gracias, Amanda. Gracias. So speaking of going back, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Ronde Pesaro Lombardo Vasquez. How did you guys arrive in Los Angeles? And when you arrived, how did each of you get inspired to dance salsa? How did it happen? Luis is this I know it's a long story. But well, and I'm going to try to take a short cut for the new dancers. I started the first salsa dance company ever in 1994 in Los Angeles, and um, it was uh, Salsa Brava. Yeah, we have some dancers here and everything. We were the first ones who went to New York for the first time, and we have Ismael Terry in the house, and uh, he's still like our brother. He's one of the legends too in the dance community. But we, everything we did is my brother Francisco. Tell me one time, you know. Hey, we like to go and dance salsa with me, and I'm like, that's all. Older people, you know, because at that time, we used to think like that, it was more for older people. And they told me, oh, it's really nice. So I went to a place, it's the first time that I was wearing a suit, very ugly suit, blue, purple, or yellow. We look very terrible. But I went with them, and I got really impressed with all these great dancers. And a lot of people, they don't even know when we start, they disappear, like Chayanne. Um, este, uh, Johnny, and uh, 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 there was so many Marco, uh, and I got inspired by them because at that moment he didn't know how to dance well. He, he invited me, but he was already doing more stuff younger than me. And because I'm the little one, I mean, she's two years older than me, and he looks so much older than <laughs> that. <laughs> but, um, no, no, but he, he told me, let's go dance, and I was home, and, and you know, as a little brother, you always get inspired, somehow like Johnny got inspired from us, 
and in the same time, I went to dance, and I got involved to this day, it changed my life forever. But before we didn't think about money, we did everything. We danced in the worst stages, at that moment, with no lights, nothing, and accidents here. And we tried to create at that moment a dance company that it didn't exist. Because even when we went to New York, and they told us in New York, you, the LA, changed New York. You changed for better, because there was nothing happening in New York until we saw the Vasquez Brothers, everything changed. So we really feel part of that, and when we met these people, the people too changed our lives too. So we are somehow connected, you know, like me and my mom. I don't want to interrupt you, but the way you guys changed it so that they can know, um, Luis Vasquez created uh, one of the most like, fused Latin dance companies. You can't really call that a soft company because they were one of the first that fused different types of music, different types of themes. There was always a theme behind Salsa Brown. There was always a purpose. Right back then, you were in New York. We were black and white shoes, bow tie, very typical, very Mambo-ish. And then when you guys came to New York, you came with this style, editing music, putting 10 songs, 10 songs, and one song, right? We were like, what the hell are they doing? And that's what he meant by the change, and how much it impacted that it was okay to think outside the box, right? Yes. It was really nice because uh, it was the first time too that we saw a completely different way of counting and moving to be from New York. We were doing a lot of shines and everything. We were not so good doing that when we were with tricks because they didn't, the people on Tuesday were kicking ass all the time. But we were like, trick and then drop, bam! And they were done. And like, and then with Francisco, the whole day, kicking the nose off, you know? It was crazy. So, but at the same time, it's, um, it was the most beautiful experience because it changed uh, my life, but not just my life, it changed so many people's lives now that I've been traveling so for so many years, almost 20 years, since my first time that I went to my first trip. And to see how everything changed, and my mom told us one day, uh, because we come from a poor family in Mexico, and I remember uh, my mom used to tell me, relax, everything's gonna change in our lives. You just have to believe it, you know, you, you can change the world. And I was really angry, I still remember with my mom, because I was like, that's not true, only people with money. People, important people can change something. And I never got that because of salsa. We were going to change so many people's lives, and because of salsa, salsa gave us too much, uh, too much to us, and uh, so I'm really thankful because of that. All the new generations dance because you love it, not because of the money or anything. All that is going to be done. I think that's why we're still enjoying what we do, and that's why we're still in this business. Because the people they see that we still love to do. The moment that I that I don't feel it, I'm gonna step off the side. Like I'm not performing anymore. And I said, I'm not going to perform and that's it. I'm gonna work as an MC, I'm not gonna teach it, I'm gonna school and everything, but this this for the new generation, so please don't ever forget to enjoy yourself and put it. Dancing is about having fun. And for expression, be yourself, dance the way you want, don't let anybody because that's what we we went and people criticized us. That's not sucks. What the heck is that? But we were young, we were doing what we were feeling, and because of that, we went to another level that we didn't know that it was going to change. Because we didn't do it for the money. Nobody was paying. We used to do everything for free. We used to drive and we never asked for anything. And then everybody else just we did this. We didn't have student teams every month or semi pro teams, right? You know, we just did it. Tax companies that ran for these people. Right, it got paid before the director got paid. You know, I remember, I remember when you were saying Salsa Brava at the time was so in demand that their all the dancers were good enough just as their directors. So they would book three congresses in one weekend and send one couple to Japan, another couple to Chile, another couple to to London. And stuff. Thank you, Luis, for doing that. Francisco, cuéntame, cómo empezó. Todo para ti, como, and, and this is going to be a very personal question. You planted the seed en estos dos hombres, right? Tú pusiste la semilla y pusiste la agua. Y, and they grew an empire. 
I told you, how did you feel? Oh, I feel amazing. My two brothers really close the line in the world of salsa. But when I started dancing salsa, honestly, you, I made two choices in my life in that part. I mean, that moment, sorry. There was a lady invited me to salsa, and I like cumbia and Mexican Latina Quebradita, they were called Banda, there was not Quebradita at that time, it was Banda, only there was different of Quebradita. And I, I still remember that day, I was, I don't want to go to the club. She's like, I like that girl, but she don't like me. <laughs> Nobody likes him, you <laughs> And she's like, come on. Let's go, let's go, you're gonna like it. This place is in Orange County. It's a JC from that one. come on. She wanted to, she liked a musician, a bandero from a group of Azúcar in that time. And I was like, oh, you wanna go see the Cubana dancing? You wanna see the guy? I don't know, I was making a decision that like the whole that I was thinking. And I swear, I still, right now, I am still believing in this. If I choose dancing quebradita, my two brothers, they never existed in Sasa. Maybe in quebradita, por <laughs> ejemplo. <laughs> yeah, but you know, they like quebradita. They don't even trust them right now. And it was tough because she was fine, me, but I was thinking, well, she's not even, she's not even one of them. I mean, I'm in relationship with me. Why am I going to go? It's my time. Cause I know she's like another guy, but I go. So I decided, okay, I go. She's like, you have to put a jacket. And I remember that I bought my first pair of shoes, um, casual shoes for dancing and baby shoes. Promotion for playlist. Playlist not come. Plastic, black plastic, white socks. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is because you want to see the Cubana. <laughs> and I was behind her in the club. As soon as the club opens the door, something happened. I fall in love with the club, with the atmosphere of the people, the way they were dressed, the ladies and the guys. And I forgot about her. <laughs> she goes over there, I walk. Like I saw me watching everybody dancing. And it was, it was magical. It was magical because I met a person, Rosie, the Puerto Rican girl. Maruja. Maruja, pardon. Maruja, Rosie. <laughs> and I said, she was like, you want to dance? Because I was dressing in my past like this, white socks like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Big suit. Well, I'm going to talk about Susu. Susu. Yeah. I was just having a jacket with the pants. It was something because maybe the guy, I buy, I buy my pants in the window, and, and the pants maybe was short guy from like my brother Chris. You know? <laughs> I'm not, he's taller than the guy. He's taller than the guy. But actually, that girl showed me like the first step because I was dancing the whole night like this. Cumbia. Cumbia. It made me one turn. I say to God, thank you because you know what you do. All my family dance thanks to me because they're natural dancers. But my mother always teaches us how to dance. She's one of the, the best teachers in the world. And the most important thing is never forget your mom and your family. That's the best thing. Amen. 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 And the most important thing for my brothers when I 
we were making the decision, I remember Johnny was in, in, um, in Texas. In Texas, in Luis, Luis, in Texas, Luis, and Johnny was in Mexico. And I was like, I never thought I would have had a career. Just, I just would go every single day to chase it from that. <laughs> every single day. And the one most important thing is, now I see what I did. After I learned the basic, I made something magical in my family and the whole world. Because those people that motivated me before, they're still there, but they're not dancing anymore. Those people, I, I really appreciate it. That's why I leave the Los Romeros. I want to tell you the story because it's important. I leave that forever because I always give the credit to Morty Basie. That guy was the guy to show me the first software to edit the music. And now, as honor of the guy who made us to do what we do right now with the music, guys, I leave that voice because it's his idea too. Los Luberos Adonis is the guy, is a guy, and John, and he was doing commercials, commercials for Coca-Cola, and he was writing the song. And I leave it right there, because thanks to the guy, everybody right here, every single company in San Cero, I remember, they know how to edit the music. There was a sin in New York, there was a sin for you to play your music. Like musicians would be very upset at you. Like if you did a fucking the point of song and you cut his arrangement in another song, it was a huge sin. Like the musicians put down on that. But, but, these gentlemen didn't care. <laughs> they didn't care. Actually, we started with the cassettes. Two cassettes. Oh, no. We play the music, we bounce, we take the cassettes, put them on, we read, and we, I still have those cassettes. Like 20,000 cassettes. And my car is still with cassettes. It's a dinosaur without a land rover. But it isn't. And the most important thing is my bass, you guys. I suffer to me the bass that you guys learned in, in a class. That was the worst nightmare for me. I made my basic in three months. I told you why. Because the ladies were like, Francisco, you have to dance with the conga. Are you okay? Cucumpayo. Cucumpayo. Oh my god, that's so difficult. And she was so, so boring for me, like, I'm like, oh, you, you never know what this is called. And I swear, I promised myself to run the basic and the crossbody lead. And I said, I have to do it. And then after three months that I run my basic and my crossbody lead, the rest, I started being a crazy guy, turning. I was doing a split before. <laughs> I was doing my street. I'm not anymore because dancing in the carpet with the sneakers, I, I put one of my ass right here, and for that time I said, forget it. <laughs> but when I see you, I was like jumping my turns. It's not like, like right now, but it was turns like I, that guy is in drugs or is in <laughs> But people just started telling me, you know, you're a clown. And I was a clown. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to the people made me, made me to really believe in what I was thinking. I don't want to dance like everybody else because everybody else was dancing in Cumbia or Puerto Rican. There was a lot of people from Puerto Rico from the base. There was a few in Long Beach, Puerto Rican dancing in Tuba. I did not even know they were dancing in Tuba. <laughs> hey, Francisco, we have one hour. One hour? Ah, two hours. No, 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 just kidding. No, but the most important thing for the new generation, guys, you guys have the best of the best because now you guys can choose any teacher 
In that time, we don't have teachers when they were in LA. And I, I asked her for a teacher, so maybe it can go. It was Laura Canelia, but she was in Beverly Hills. I didn't even have a car. It was no metro in that time. And to get in a bus to go over there, it was three hours. So I prefer to go back to Mexico in two hours. <laughs> Beverly Hills or Mexico. Mexico is close. But you know something? I'm glad that we have this conversation to continue with the history. But, guys, we're leaving you basically. Johnny. All right, Johnny. So, Johnny, I'm going to go back to the first one. Johnny, I'm going to go back to the first one. So, Johnny, being the little brother, you know, I'm going to get you my last thing, but I'm going to go back to the first one. Um, we want to know a little bit of how you guys started, but why did you go left? I felt like you saw your brothers were doing this, but you wanted to do this. What inspired you to not go the same route? Because they both had major dance companies, Los Numeros, Sasala, but you didn't want to do that. You were the first, one of the first to move to Europe, right? Fue el primero que se mudó de Latin para vivir en Europa. Yo te quedaste aquí, te fuiste para allá y te quedaste. So, talk about a little bit, ¿cómo empezaste? ¿Y cómo fue ese cambio? Ok, you need to hear it. Ok, I was in Mexico, and I used to have a lot of bad companies. I was the only brother who, um, who stayed in Mexico after my brothers moved to here to LA. So, I have seven sisters and me. They didn't want to play with me. They didn't want to be around me. So what I did, go on the streets and choose that company. So I started, I started doing things that you're not supposed to do. <laughs> I don't regret it. I learned a lot. And, and I went to to the, I went to the, the mental hospital. No. <laughs> <laughs> I went to jail. You went to prison. I went to prison. The mental hospital. It's the same way. It's the same way. It's the same way. And, and, and let me tell you, it's, 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 um, I, I, I said this in an uh, interview a week ago, and it's true, my, my cousin got involved, and um, my friends um, got shot. Okay? And they taught us and that pain and da 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 So they wanted to. Okay? So my mom, Call my brother and say, if you don't take your brother over there, or he's gonna finish in jail, or he's gonna die. And that's how and I, 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 I'm telling you this because I want you to know how Sasa changed my life for better. Yeah. And I don't like I don't like to make mistakes. And I didn't like Sasa. My dream it was to be a soccer player. You know? So I started to go in high school, Lakewood High School. And I was living with my brother Luis and Joe back then. So I was going to high school in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. At 2 o'clock, I was practicing for the soccer team, the varsity team. At 4 o'clock, I was going in the morning to go to work in the mall and the Taco Bell. <laughs> Finish at 10 o'clock at night, cleaning everything, and go back home. And to his school, a baby teacher. <laughs> oh, he's not a baby teacher. That was that was my beginning. I think after one year, they would ask him salsa. They would help him. One day, Luis told me, "You know what? Uh, you have a uh, Sunday off. You wanna come with me? We are gonna celebrate a uh, student birthday." That's how he gave everything for me. I wanted to a party, orgies. I still remember the class, orgies. 
And I was in the table, I didn't know how to have salsa. And he looked me like my brothers. We know that thing is not part of the place. Okay? I uh, went to the club with my brother, and I was sitting at the table, and all the students, and this lady who was uh, having the birthday started drinking. And she was drinking tequila shots, right? <laughs> and it's typical that you dance with the crow in a circle, the happy birthday song, you know? Okay, so let's do that, let's do that. I was so shy back then. Do you know what she did? She grabbed me to dance with the, with the first one. And I'm just so embarrassed. And I go in the dance floor, and the girl's like trying to, to make me do the basics. But I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know how to dance. And she got close to me and the air, and she says, when you learn how to dance, we'll dance. And she left me on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I turn around, I left, everybody continue dancing, and I'm telling you that night, I cry, and uh, and uh, harder. <laughs> I feel I feel really bad, and I say to myself, I have to learn how to dance. The next day, uh, I was in, in his class, beginning class, and I said, Luis, I want to learn how to dance salsa. Yeah, and I was in places like that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we didn't count like that. That was the count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he teach me my first basic, you know? And um, and then I start um, getting more involved. I used to go to the studio, watch them, have a dance. And then I move with my brother, Francisco. He's the one who Push more, and he's like, okay, because they just to dance together. But when Luis uh, makes his own company, they split. So, los rumberos, salsa brava. So, when he saw me already, yeah, knowing the basic and everything, Francisco was like, okay, you're gonna do a show with me. Oh. But then I start going, Alicia, teach me my first, my first time. Um, Crossbody, my first dancing, no? Alisa. I want to say by the way, quickly. Um, the mother of Sasha. She's the ambassador. She was this woman who had the heart and always wanted to take care of everybody and all of us. I was one of the last kids she ever helped. When I moved from New York City, this lady helped me get my first car, took me to all the clubs. Just, she was just amazing, and then she told me what she did for you guys and how close she was for you. And she also helped Albert Torres have his first event at the Sportsman's Lodge. So Albert Torres came from this lady, you know, she supported him and a lot of us. So continue. Now, to finish it, to not make it long, like I told you, I started learning, going to the clubs, getting more involved in salsa. After a year and a half, I was champion of the world at the Maya Club. It took me one year and a half to learn and to, and to be a champion and a professional because I wanted to do the competition, but it's an amateur. And he goes, no, you go. And I'm like, no, man, it's Rogelio. It's uh, uh, Alexa Silva. Because you know what? At the beginning, beginning, you don't know this. Maybe you know, but I like the way Alexa Silva dances. I didn't like the way my brother's dance. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I was like, damn, that guy, I won't dance like that. You know, my brother still, he was not that crazy, crazy, crazy. And he would just be standing the seat, would just be kind of, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Yes, remember? And then people were like, what? Do you talking to him? Oh, yes, he counted to 12. And, 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 and going back, back to the point of what, what you say, I had the opportunity to work with Tito Puente. And you know, if you don't answer to it, you cannot move forward with it. So I'm like, damn, how are we going to do it, you know? And my brother, if you want to dance on two, you just have to kick and step. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, 
Hilton, or the Academy Awards. And we would be And I put it together, right? And it was in the 1999 at the Elvis Congress. And Tito Puente, it was a judge with Eddie Torres, with Andy Garcia, um, who else? I don't remember exactly. That was the competition for Bocari, the Ali competition that I won. And Tito Puente gave me the trophy, okay? So we made a tour. We made a tour, and I was the, the only dancer representing LA on one. Because from New York, we had uh, back then um, Jason Molina and Brenda Abers. And from Puerto Rico, Papa Tambor. And they were dancing on two. So we went to Salo Bay, New Mexico, and it was a whole orchestra of people who the play. You know? And I swear to God, this is not a lie. We perform on the floor, he finished his show. I, uh, 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 my friends perform and I was uh, the last one. Tito Puente came out, sit on stage, and watch me dance his music. And, and, and I'm like, no, for me it was like, I danced someone. When I talked to him back then, I said, Maestro, uh, you, you, you didn't give me that sorry for what I did with your songs, you know? <laughs> He told me, he told me, I mean, that I had something. He didn't know, I don't know. <laughs> but he said, you have something. That's why you can do that. That's why. So, uh, I'm so glad to, to be a salsero. I'm so happy. But I always, I never forget where, where I, I came from. Thank, thanks to them. Thanks to my family. Thanks to so many of you, so many, so many of you that are here. Thank you because you make me feel a lot of love for Sasa. But don't forget, always being humble. Humble, humble, humble. Okay? Because Sasa is to make friends, not to make enemies. Thank you. But the one who gave the name to him it was Eddie Torres on stage. And a lot of people in Puerto Rico, a lot of people they got mad, I remember, because they were like, why he's calling somebody the Prince of Salsa and he has somebody who has some one, it's a Mexican. And at that moment there was uh, many answers, like Franco Martinez coming out really strong and everything. But uh, he got like, he got something very special, we cannot call him the king because I'm the king, you know? <laughs> Well, he, said, he said, I remember this, I was a kid, he said, unfortunately, I can't call you the king because I'm still alive. So, I'm going to call you the Prince of Salsa. That's how it happened. And actually, uh, Eddie Torres, Eddie Torres, he showed us how to count, because we count. Oh, 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 I was going to get that. Nelson Flores, for me, it was Nelson Flores, the first one who ever So speaking, I have two more questions. Good points. Speaking of Eddie Torres, a lot of you don't know this, Eddie Torres was a huge instrument to the LA style as well, because when these brothers were going off winning championships, there still wasn't a structure. There wasn't a structure where New York there was structured. Eddie Torres learned from a very famous ballroom dancer, a female, on how to structurize salsa, because salsa came from the street. There wasn't a dance that came from, the, from that studio. But you would get more students, more clients, if you were a structured dance. So, any tour is going to help you guys structurize your style. How did that happen? When did that happen? And what inspired that? Uh, it was 1999. Uh, um, we had the first conference student in LA. He was watching my class, and I remember I was counting. And he was watching me and he said, why are you watching me like that? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He went to, to, 
So I finish my class and say, Francisco, I want to show you something very important, but you have to show me something for me too. And I say, okay. I say, okay, don't get offended because it's not, you don't have to be down, right? Everything that what you're doing, match with the music. That, that's okay, but that's not the way you count the music. And remember, so the music count is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to do a bounce, you do a four and eight. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I was like, he's crazy. And then I went on, because I said, I, I, I was, I didn't take the class. I mean, I got that in that time. And I was counting one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Which is not. But I was like a break count. But when he showed me, he showed me that count, I understand better the music. My imagination, my creativity became like a volcano. In second, he said, okay, now you have to show me something. And I said, what I can show you to do with the key. He said, I want you to show me how to do the nature. <laughs> and, and he did it, he, I showed him, I did the next drop, and he was doing as an owner, and every single show, that time, from 1999 to 2003, with Maria, he was doing the next drop, if you watch the videos, he was doing the next drop, to Maria thinks that I show the next drop, because he showed me Maria. Right? So, we're talking about nice and beautiful things, now we're going to go to the first one. I imagine you are brothers. I want to start this with Johnny first, and then towards the movies. But at the time, you must have been very competitive with each other. At the time, let's be open, let's be open and honest. You wanted to be better than Francisco. Francisco, you wanted to teach your brothers, I'm the king, you guys look for me. And Luis, you wanted to show them, I'm different. I'm, not, I'm more business oriented. Right? So, talk about the fights, talk about the jealousies, talk about the competitiveness. He's with you three. He's Please. a beautiful brother, but he wishes to kick my butt since I was a little kid. Because he doesn't like to lose. So the, and this is talking honestly. We used to play football and I would used to score, I was better than him, you know. <laughs> At that time, nah, I don't just, no, 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 we used to play football and uh, I scored and I was like, okay, 4-1, and he was like, no, oh, what a 4-4, and I was like, why did you score the other goal, you know? So we would just do, get it on and, and, and uh, hit me on the head. And, that is true. And then I said, I said, I'm, I'm the champion because we used to play, you know, like for the World Championship. And then he was like, now we have to play for it. I was like, no, this is the World Championship. There's nothing else. I was like, oh, we didn't play one of the universe. You know, World Championship. But anyway, she would used to hit me all the time, but I love him, you know, today and now. And it's just a problem. But when we start the, the Sasa Senior, it's really good, the competition. Remember this. Good competition between each other, between brothers. We were used to teach at the dance factory on the top level, and if it was a person down, and, and said the same student to go to the bathroom, you have to go down and go whatever they were practicing. And it was like, tee -tee 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 -tee. and I was just checking out, like, oh, damn, that's a little kind of shit. And I was going to back up and tell the group, we need to rehearse because those bombers are kicking ass. <laughs> and then when we find out some of the dancers that were going up to check what we were doing, and it was like this, a good competition. And but every time that he was performing, we all the brothers would get from backstage and hug each other because this is what it was the love of dancing and it's still and I see it in so many places. It's already 173 countries that I've been the way you're traveling in a way. And to see how much is going in other places and to come to LA, but what I saw yesterday too, and I was expecting more. And I'm gonna take it really, I'm gonna tell you the truth because we're here to talk about the truth. I was very disappointed in a way. And it made me feel a little bit like, what can we do? We need to do something, we need to bring it back, otherwise my child is gonna take over. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's something new and then 
and you know what? You sing in English, you can play Justin Bieber song and put them in Chacha Meet and that's already hot. Everyone knows the song. And then people go with the salsa. The good thing about the salsa is that when you're dying, you can dance some different styles and you can still create a new style if you want. But nobody can think about it. Everybody goes, I like the basket. Oh, I like the video. Oh, I like the go. It's like an imitation, but we never did. Even the three baskets, brother, we never imitated each other. We look different, we look different, we, we are very similar. We are, we, are, we are different in many different ways, but we always, I always appreciate, I remember one month, so I'm telling you, the first time of Frankie Martinez, when we do my shoes, remember, and I was like, that's different, you know? My little, he's my little, he's my little, for the people that you know, it's really an honor to have this guy in here. A lot of people they don't know what's up because now you're with the new dancers and I can tell all my dancers from San Francisco, all those that were students, people who got inspired. There's anybody here who don't say anything about where you came from, you are happy, that you are lying to yourself. Always say that. We have an award and it was, uh, you know, part of the group and everything. And uh, there's a table in Cuerno, Chile, Venezuela, Laura Canelia, as we have uh, here is the uh, Rodrigo Guzman, you know. There's so many dances, Stan in the house, this girl did so much for the salsa community in Europe, here dancing with my brother. We were used to exchange dancers, because every time that he got mad with one of his dancers, the dancer was coming like, I'm not the young brother. I'm not too much in that company. I was like, oh, that's cool, now we gotta get strong. And when someone was leaving, they were going from my dance company, they were going to him, you know? So it was nice to share, because it's honest, it's not, it's not happening anymore in, in, uh, around the world. Everybody's dancing the same. And actually, we need to tell the, the world, don't dance the same. You have your mentality. Learn from everybody. Learn the culture. Have fun. Yes, take the steps. But don't try to put the same jacket like they have to The same type of ranger outfit. <laughs> nice costumes, nice music, and you can learn from YouTube. At that time, there was no YouTube, no MySpace, no Facebook, no nothing. Everything, somebody would just to learn from a VHS tape, send it all the way to Europe. Three months. People are like, you should, you can show, you can send me your show, sure. I got to be three months because, you know, I don't want to pay right away in Phoenix. No, it was no Phoenix. Three months to get it up on that lady. I, I told my brother, you know, right now that we have the seminars, how many people they can call the brother or the sister or the mom? Never. Before everybody will wait two weeks to get a letter from the mother from the brother. And right now you have a phone that you can just click and send a message and say to your mom, I love your mom. I love your brother. I love you. Sister. To anybody that you love. You will do it. See? We need to come back again. We have to come in for better, not for the worse. So one of the most important things for now that we success is we really travel around the world and now as we do it with our heart. Because I know a lot of people really know me. They will, I still change, I never change myself. I still Francisco Vasquez from the day I started that dancing and right now. And I don't think that I know what I want. Because right now I'm still a beginner myself. I see the generations inspire me to continue. Maybe my legs doesn't work anymore like that. I will try. Well, what we're trying to do um, as a company, uh, as part of the Pro Night Dance Club as well, I'm also in the Sasa Festival, you know, I feel like legends don't need to dance, legends don't need to perform. I think legends can speak and they can do so much more than one stage, right? I, I know so many dancers and so many artists that they feel like, ah, and this is not the case with you guys by any means. There's so many artists, oh, I don't sing anymore, or oh, I don't produce music no more, or oh, I don't I can't dance the way that kid dances, so I'm not gonna go there. No, but there's experiences that you guys have, that you guys can give these children. And this is why this whole Congress, 
Maybe some of you kids might not know the artist that we bought, but we took a risk here. We took a risk. We took a risk by bringing these new generations, hiring, you know, Robert and Isabel of New York City, you know, who they're part of the number one couples in New York, Alex and Rafa of Colombia, the new couples that are taking it there, but I wanted the new couples to see what these gentlemen, what the legends are teaching this weekend, like like Morgan Indians, like Johnny, like Francisco, like Luis, and together get inspired, you know. So this is Pavarini, we have two partners here that are really appreciated being here. And three, actually three. Um, Laura Canellas and Eva Venezuela and Monica Gonzalez are giving you so much to the world. I think you're more than that. For 23 years, the career travel around the world, I was creating moves, a lot of them in trust by, you know, playing sometimes that uh, Albert Ramos. The first time that I got one of the, the, the leg drops and the leg, it was an accident in, in, uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. I was there, I was doing a leg drop, and then I started playing with, with the head of Monica. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it to the leg, and people that were surprised, and were like, I can never say, do it again, do it again. And I was doing it, and I see the circle of people coming and coming and coming. When I was doing so many leg drops, we had maybe like a run, a hundred films of leg traps. And it was the most popular thing happens in history in leg traps. Churros and leg traps. <laughs> the, thing, the thing is also, a lot of people oh, in the back, they say, okay, I teach LA style. Well, oh, we're gonna go to Europe, okay? A lot of schools there, are they put in the school. Okay, New York style, LA style, Cuban style, baby dance. <laughs> and I always say, okay, he teaches LA style. Do you, any, do you know anything about LA? Do you know who, who, which sets represent LA? The basics that the really represent Los Angeles. That's the Do you know what I mean? They don't know, but they have LA style. You know? So, this is what we need to know sometimes. We need to, and especially for the new generation. You know, now a lot of people, uh, I think most of you are from here, from LA, no? Most of you? Okay. A lot of people think, let me tell you now, really, I get really sad for this because a lot of people think that if you dance on one, it dances a lifestyle. You see how ignorant, how stupid is this? Dancing on one, it's a count, musicality. Okay? And in the LA style, it's a little bit different, okay? We don't dance like we used to dance 20 years ago, okay? <laughs> it's true. We don't dance like 20 years ago. We try to be better, to learn from another struggle, to fusion our style, you know what I mean? So, the thing is that they don't get confused. And then, oh, if you don't dance on two, you not great. You know, I hear, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not gonna say the name, but I, everybody knows. It was a uh, publicity for his event in Italy, and he said in the publicity, you have to come to my event if you wanna learn a better level. Okay? Do you like that? I mean, do you not accept if you dance on one? You know, you can dance the way you want to dance. Dancing on one is not wrong. Okay? But uh, everything is done by the instructor. The instructor is teaching the, the, the students wrong. You know? No, it's dancing. It's success on the streets. Okay? Now, it's like my mother says. We're we'll getting at a better level with two and everything. But if you dance on one, boom, you can have the same flavor as you dance on two. It's your personality. It's you. How you gonna feel it? You know? So don't get involved in, in these things. Dance on one, dance on two, dance on whatever you do, 
do it with this. With this, don't, don't, don't let anybody tell you how to enjoy your dance. You know? Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. So how about a little couple of questions before we end? Anybody has a question? Anybody has a question? Sir? Sure. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> New York in the house. Please say your name, right. where you're from, awesome. what company you represent. Awesome. Edwin Lemus um, with uh, IE Social and Inland Empire, about 60 miles east of here. And I'm also following Johnny today. Um, thank you guys for being here. My question for you is, can you teach heart? Because so much of what you guys are saying is dance with your heart, okay? Instead of like dancing so you can post something on Instagram, right? <laughs> um, can you teach heart? And if, if you can, how do you teach the younger generations that want a body roll, that want a head roll, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's, that's like what's trending right now, as opposed to dancing salsa, what's, what's harder, what's more difficult. So, but ladies and gentlemen, who wants to answer that? Okay, well, this is the thing. Right now, when young boys or young girls or the new generation come, they just want to dance. Man. I mean, if you want because to, to learn how to move your body, you have to take lessons hours just to move your shoulder. You know, your chest. But they don't want that. They want to come and come on, speak. <laughs> it is true. But it's a way. We can do that. We can teach people. Exactly. But they don't, they don't want to do it. At least you take a real private, a real person who says, I want to learn from zero, zero. I want to learn how to move my whole body to, 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 to feel it. You know? You have certain ways to teach that. But like I told you, it's a little bit difficult because in the classes, you have a class and they just want to go and, and that's it. You start like doing something like that and then leave your class. Um, one of the most important things in our salsa culture, guys, I want to talk about this because it is very important to all the structures and the people they have their own style. Dancing the way you dance is perfect. But criticizing other people, put it down. That's the worst. One of the most important things is nobody is dancing the real dance. Nobody. Because Puerto Rico is not the And nobody wants to dance like Puerto Rico. They want to dance to go back to New York. Everybody. The real dancing are two Puerto Rico. Going forward. But nobody wants to dance like that. Cuba. Going forward. Some. Going forward. Institution. Going back, I'm sorry, but this is something crazy like that. And I have the respect of those people. But if we're going to go back to the culture, we have to dance the way it was created. Puerto Rico, Cuba. But nobody wants to dance like the real thing. They dance in the room right now, they are because they want to put in the show. But they just want to know, they step there. They want to go through the whole culture. Exactly. Yeah. We need, if we're going to do something, we need to go to the culture and learn it. Because we still the steps, but we don't represent the culture. We don't, know, we, we, don't, we don't do the culture. So one of the most important things we know, one, is not allowed how you dance. Because in Colombia, they don't dance like us. In Mexico City, they don't, they don't dance like us. In Curacao, they don't dance like us. In, in Venezuela, they don't dance that's like a, you know, so they don't know how to dance. Because I say some people, they see these people, and the people with all respect, and what the people they look like that. What is this? Hello? Guarache is older like the mom. Do you know what it means the word dancing? A lot of people will use the word dancing, but do you know what it means? But most of the time, the people don't even know. It's a free expression of a body. It means that nobody can tell you how to do it because the people who are me, who came with the modern dance, somebody who got out of the jazz and ballet, and they thought they were crazy, like Picasso, like Beethoven, all those that the people now mention are the ones who got out of the box. 
And if you imitate, you're gonna be just a copycat. But when you express yourself, it doesn't matter which style, all instructors teach your students to care for the dancing, to care for the beginners. Dance for the beginners. Otherwise, we're gonna lose a lot of the new generation because we just wanna dance with the dancers. No, whatever I go, I always put in my head. Tonight, I'm gonna dance with three people that nobody wants to dance with. The fat one, the oldest one, and the one with my leg. No? And you know what? I go and I do it, and you don't even know how many people you can change. It. You can change the people's life. There's some dancers in the middle. You can change the life by one dance. One dance. You see one person. You don't know if that person is going to be the next organizer that is going to change the salsa world. And we go back to eating the salsa free. There was one of my students, and he changed. He's the first one to start the first salsa web. So I love that come out at the beginning. And most of the people, they, sometimes you don't even know anymore. Those people, they change everything. And if you're here, it's because you saw your instructors. If I say instructor, they saw somebody else. And now we're all connected. At the end, we're leaving. But being back here in Los Angeles to see a lot of people was really, really nice. But, but we need to bring it back at the end and kind of move back I'm over there. Over there, I'm doing everything. I moved to a small city, 300,000 people. And when I was there, I started with two students. From being in Los Angeles, having 120 students in the classes, to move with two students. And the people, they tell me, how do you feel about like, I do fine. Because I know that if I want, I'm going to move this. Right now, I have one of the biggest dance schools in Sweden, in that area. And it took me years. I've been living for seven years there. But I still do it. And people always say, oh, you're getting older. You're not getting... Now you stop dancing, I'm not performing. Nobody's going to call you. Every weekend we still travel and everything. Because it's not just about dancing. It's about expressing the love for the dancing. Really, try tonight. Go and dance somebody. Go and hug somebody. You know, can you do something to me? Hug the person next to you. Do it. Even if you don't know each other. Nobody's going to get pregnant. Come on, do it. Maybe somebody's going to get pregnant. Come here. Bend the body. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. It's you. in our culture of dancing. That was supposed to be like that because even people from San Francisco, they were dancing a one before, now they're dancing a two. I dance on two. And I love it. I dance bachata and people, they say, why do you dance bachata? I say, I love it. I go try to dance in Suma. I love it. I love to do everything. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's not about counting or styling. It's about one culture. They unite the whole world right now. It's one culture. Us, we're gonna make it, and you guys are gonna have so much fun. Try everything. Dale. Mira. Never stop learning from the culture, guys. The way you just did a hug, that means you guys can learn another style, or you can try to dance with someone that is not your, their own style. If you want to, try to dance with a lady, maybe. Well, the guys on two, they can lead the lady on two, because we're the leaders. But the ladies are the ones who ask the people to try to dance with you too. Don't be afraid ladies to ask to the guys. Never. If the guys say no, go home. <laughs> Can I have a question? Do you have a question? Your first impression in Puerto Rico when LA and New York first saw each other that first moment. What were you thinking? I was the best experience. It means to me, for the people that said no, we went to the first world salsa conference that it changed the people, all the dancers of, of this world. Remember, at that time, Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, it didn't exist in the salsa world. It was on the, on the CDs, no? On the vinyls, uh, vinyls, but it didn't exist until the, all this revolution that became alive. We work with them on a dream come true and they start traveling to China, to places that these artists in the 70s and all that, they never did. 
So we grow up all together somehow. But it was the most experience because we cried when they played the last song in Puerto Rico. I remember there was one girl from uh, Colombia, two from Japan, the three aliens from Italy, and then there uh, was uh, Felipe Polanco, remember? Then the Mambo Legends, remember? <laughs> and, and, and anyways, it was just really cool to see all these great dancers together, and it was like a baby the candy store, the woman walking to the place, that's the whole night, without stopping one song, only when they were playing merengue, because at that time, there was no much other like right now, it was salsa and merengue, and it was merengue, that's what I told you, you know? <laughs> that was the moment you could be, but, wait, 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 it's something really nice, when we, when they say, we're gonna play the last song of the night, and we're not gonna do the event anymore, we lost $25,000, but we were so impressed with the whole weekend, and we say, no, do it again. And the guy was like, if you promise me that each one it brings another person to Puerto Rico next year, and we do it. And I brought 269 people from my school, friends, because I was on the street telling them, you need to see this, it's the most beautiful thing. Even just to think about it, you cry the whole damn place, we cried, I've never seen this before, we didn't want to stop before for us all. And, and it was one of the most beautiful experiences until now, it stays there forever and ever. So, the most beautiful experience is the first time the company of Los Romeros in San Salvador in New York sharing with the best dancers in New York. It was like 200 people uh, the day we performed with Melendez Studio. Let me tell you something. Walking in the New York street, going to a restaurant, on one or two, you never see it right now. Let me tell you something. Everybody, and we're together. We were sleeping in Nelson Flores' house. Oh, do remember, Jeanette? We were in the whole dance company of South Florida, sleeping on the floor. <laughs> like, like taquitos, you know? Like <laughs> And then he put, because it was so damn cold, that he put the, the stool and everything, you know, to, to stay warm. And, but it was the most beautiful thing, smoking some weed at that time. Ah, it was. <laughs> and it was really nice. It was really nice to be because we have the pictures. But that's so far there was no discrimination. There was something behind it, it push you, like, like, oh, they're going to kick out of like we said, a good competition. But a lot of people try to say that, that we have problems with the people to no, 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 we are not so too. The people see me dancing on two, like, you're not so too, like, why not? You know, so, remember, if you see that he's here, it's because we still love each other. After so many years, people too, you are our friends that have nothing to do, and all the new generation, he's on my chat and you're welcome too. Okay, exactly. But you know what? It was beautiful. Beautiful. Right now, we lose that. Because right now, when we perform, it, it's like, like a competition. I never felt that before. He told me about yesterday. Oh, I, I, I was talking to him. He didn't go, you know what? I don't know why I feel so much pressure now when I go to dance. Let me go, I don't know. Let me go, the older I get, I got more pressure. Let me go, I feel like everybody's competing. I feel like they really. I don't, I, you know what I mean? Before all the dances, like before the show, what I mean? God bless you, fool. That was the old school. Right now, I'm sorry, but it happens. They see you, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> Hi. Do you know? And it's so sad because we can change that. And I'm so used to the new generation. So John, try to do it like it used to be. So let's interrupt because we have a question that's going to be perfect to what we're talking about. Hey guys, uh, first of all, I wanted to say that uh, I've been fortunate to dance full time for 15 years and I owe it to you guys. The first time I went to salsa dancing uh, was to the sports to watch and Johnny was performing and I made it my, my last mission to dance like you. I still cannot do it, but I will continue to, continue to try that. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough to dance with Luis, uh, with Salsa Bravo for three years and that totally changed my career and opened my eyes to everything. 
And then uh, Francisco choreographed my first championship choreography, and I won a, first, uh, a few first places. So thank you guys, uh, and thank you for putting this together. It's really magical. Um, but we've been talking about how the salsa scene really took a tank, uh, and it's not what it used to be. So my question is, what can we do, and what is the advice that we can um, that we can share with everybody to bring the community back together and really take salsa back, not to where it used to be, but to the next level, right? Um, and also that I mean, I teach and dance forty hours a week. How do you guys stay so charged with love and passion? How do you guys keep giving so much? Because sometimes I feel like drained, like oh my god, I can't. And you guys are always giving so much. How do you guys keep yourselves charged? You know, my, you know, my mom would used to tell me, and not every day I still do this. I was just looking like it's only for really poor and we didn't have much to eat because I was the one eating everything. But anyway, at that, at that time, <laughs> my mom always told me, when you wake up, you have the power to create an incredible day. Even if it doesn't go the way you want, you can make it better. And in my life, it's been like this, I'm 46 years old, but every day I try to be more positive. When I wake up, I have my son, seven years old, always hugging the people, even if I don't know hello, and, and he's doing the same. So you as an instructor, you have the power with your students to create monsters in a good way or in a bad way. Because they are imitating you, they are looking at you. And if you act like this, they're gonna act like this. If you say, hey, no, this way, no, that's not the way you dance, and everything, no, no, no. So you can change the salsa scene, not only here in Los Angeles. This is just a moment that is going like this. But only you, the instructors, can do it. Otherwise, your classes are going to be empty with 10 students, 5 students. And you're going to be like, why? If you think that you are so good, but you don't have students, you have to think about it. Because you create that. Don't just go to the salsa scene, go to the street the way we were used to do. Go and dance at the mall. We were dancing on the street for the love of dancing at the beach at the park and people were coming. I like that, do you have a car? I didn't have a car. No, I gave you my, my beeper at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and that's the way I got the students. And television really helped because we were used to work on television a lot. We were really lucky. But you, I'm over there, I'm in charge of my world. You're here, you're in charge of your world, with your wife, with your friends, with your students, especially all those kids, the new generation. Change them because they are the new generation that are going to change the salsa scene. Otherwise, this is going to go a little, little by little going down, and it's going to be affected everybody. Because the day that there's no dance like this, you're not going to have places to dance. There's going to be less dance groups. There's going to be less... Uh, Clubs, less uh, DJs, less everything affects everybody. So please support each other and teach the new generation and whoever comes into the social world. Please. And I have one more thing. If you guys make socials, just because you guys are going to make a couple hundred bucks, because that's what it is going to happen, because if you cannot charge $20, thank you. Have the respect for the class, guys. Have the respect for the class. DJs, bands. People that don't appreciate dance anymore, or DJs. You know something? We have to educate ourselves too, to respect those people, because without that DJ right there, they're going to dance. You can imagine the music? <laughs> if that's so show, that's so show that they sell the building, you're going to return to do the club and you don't want it? So, guys, come on. Socials is for reunion as a dance company. Because we did it for, okay, a dance company for a little bit. Thing, uh, we need to respect the clan. The clan has the, the, the way they make their living. And I'm serious. It's more social than now, the clan is happening. That's why the levels go down, because people, they just want to dance in a little group or right here. No, guys, more than your people to, to go to the class. But you have a live dance here. In Europe, we struggle a lot with live dance because they are too expensive to bring them over there. So when they are over there, the people they go and they pay and they don't care because it's something like this. And when he's trying, or many events try to bring live orchestras and everything, I know that it's expensive, and I understand for some people it is like that. But 
Sometimes we need to support. If we don't support each other, if you're in Star Trek or whatever, we're going to get affected. We're going to get affected. And this is not okay. And his question too, that we can teach love? Yes, we can teach love. That's the easiest one. It's the most easy part. If you love yourself, you will motivate someone to really love yourself too. We can do that again. Motivate yourself, love yourself, and believe me, like my brother said, give it a hug. We need more hugs than the family and the friends, and then your mom, especially your mom and your dad, because your dad is a good too. But so guys, if you have to call your mom, <laughs> call it. He really loves my mom, you don't understand. Is that Like, you know, my mother like always playing his hair like this. And, yeah, but so, so, sometimes we say, why is a set of weird like that? No. It's a set of we love what we do. Because something right here that you just do it for the money. I don't think so. I see so many people right here, they, 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 they love the salsa. They love it. what they feel in the stage. How many people they really enjoy being here? Resident. Did you feel it here or here? Yeah. Be honest. You know something? We know we do it for you guys. So you guys can enjoy our work. We don't do it for us. Tonight we need to support all of us because yesterday my brother uh, joined told me we need to support all the people that were not supporting much. Even if you don't like the show, you have to fake it. <laughs> Ladies, you're really doing freaking stuff. So please, tonight, tonight, oh. you have to support. They do it social, they do it everything with a lot of people. I'm fine because they push people. Why? Like I said, get their respect for those of us. Okay? Do your events, do everything. But guys, don't stop going to the class. Directors, please. I know you work so hard. What's the big ideas for the class? Can I get you three up here, please? Who's performing tonight? Some of you, who's performing? I promise. Because uh, being with these guys, forget it. But <laughs> today I'm gonna be here from the first show at the Xbox, and I'm, you're gonna see that I'm gonna support every single one because you bring the energy. Sometimes if you start, oh, the other one get, you know. If you see somebody that is not doing that, whack them. Do that on the head. Okay. <laughs> yesterday, guys. Yesterday, Manny Martinez gave me a, a a video. I'm not gonna play it right here, but. There was a video, there was history and salsa. There was Tropica Jam, Frankie Martinez and Aisha, and me and Marta. I created a choreography with technique from Frankie Martinez too, because I was taking the class from Frankie Martinez. And to, to respect her, uh, I mean the mambo, and we did this, this routine, those three, Tropica Jam, Frankie Martinez and Aisha and myself, and one and two, and it's incredible to see how was the people before for the love of the mambo and the salsa together? And I was looking for this video for more than 15 years. And Frankie yesterday told me, Francisco, I got the video that we performed to together. And what I'm going to post it in Instagram and YouTube. It's going to blow it a little bit. You can see Frankie Martinez the way he was dancing before. And Aisha and, um, and you were just Tropic Ajay. Francisco, the way I was dancing before too. And it's very really kind of it's funny, but it's amazing. All right, guys, I brought this gentleman up here because it's our responsibility now that we have three people looking at us, but we don't have a history. We don't have a real track list. We do have a real track, a football player, a basketball player, an athlete, right? We do have actors. But we don't, we don't have a way to track salsa dancers. And this idea of creating the Los Angeles Salsa Festival Hall of Fame Awards, that's where it came from. Tomorrow night we're going to be inducting these three gentlemen to the first ever Hall of Fame Awards.
not, not because we don't insert it here, but we, we talk about three brothers, but I want respect to one of them, Pioneer, Roque, Roque, and he's going to have next year, he's, he's going to have next year, Everybody, we don't mention some names because it's too many, but really, thank you. Without you, it was not going to be possible all this, so it's not just us, it's all of you. So, with the Hall of Fame, with the idea, we're going to have a website that's going to be up for as long as we're alive, for as long as we're up. And this website is going to tell about your history. And every year we're going to be adding on dancers, historians, and the whole idea is to create a book. Not a salsa, but a book of black dancers, salsa dancers, that helped take salsa music to the next level. We speak to salsa legends all the time. Bobby Valentino, the final all-stars, who's coming tomorrow. He's one of the creators of salsa. But you know who he owes his career to? Dancers. But there's not a name that people can pick one to. And that's the inspiration for the Hall of Fame Awards. Tomorrow night at 10 p.m. we'll be in WCG Jeffrey Live. Thank you so much, Thank you so much. Gracias.